Proem by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Proem Oh, for a soul that fulfills music like that of a bird, thrilling with rapture the hills, heedless if any one heard. Or like the flower that blooms lone in the midst of the trees, filling the woods with perfumes, careless if any one sees. Or like the wandering wind over the meadows that swings, bringing wild sweets to mankind, knowing not that which it brings. Oh, for a way to impart beauty, no matter how hard, like unto nature, whose art never once dreams of reward. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Voice on the Wind by Madison Cawine Read for LibriVox.org by Ross Clayton, June 3rd, 2K16, Roebuck, South Carolina She walks with the wind on the windy height When the rocks are loud and the waves are white And all night long she calls through the night O oh, my children, come home Her bleak gown, torn as a tattered cloud Tosses around her like a shroud while over the deep her voice rings loud, O oh, my children, come home, come home, O oh, my children, come home. Who is she who wanders alone when the wind drives sheer and the rain is blown, who walks all night and makes her moan, O oh, my children, come home, whose face is raised to the blinding gale, whose hair blows black and whose eyes are pale, while over the world is heard her wail, O oh, my children, come home, come home, O oh, my children, come home. She walks with the wind in the windy wood, The sad rain drips from her hair and hood, And her cry sobs by like a ghost pursued, O oh, my children, come home. Where the trees are gaunt and the rocks are drear, The owl and the fox crouch down in fear, While wild through the wood her voice they hear, O oh, my children, come home, come home, O oh, my children, come home. Who is she who shudders by when the boughs blow bare and the dead leaves fly, who walks all night with her wailing cry, O oh, my children, come home, who, strange of look and wild of tongue, with pale feet wounded and hands wan wrung, sweeps on and on with her cry far flung, O oh, my children, come home, come home, O oh, my children, come home. Tis the spirit of autumn no man sees, The mother of death and mysteries, Who cries on the wind all night to these, O oh, my children, come home. The spirit of autumn, pierced with pain, Calling her children home again, Death and dreams, through ruin and rain, O oh, my children, come home, come home, O oh, my children, come home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Land of Hearts Made Whole by Madison Carwain. Read for LibriVox.org by Gabi. The Land of Hearts Made Whole. Do you know the way that goes Over fields of rue and rose, Warm of scent and hot of hue, Roofed with heaven's bluest blue, To the vale of dreams come true? Do you know the path that twines, Banked with elder bosks and vines, Under boughs that shade a dream, Hurrying crystal as a gleam, to the hills of love a dream? Tell me, tell me, have you gone Through the fields and woods of dawn, Meadowlands and trees that roll, Great of grass and huge of bowl, To the land of hearts made whole? On the way among the fields, Poppies lift vermilion shields, In whose hearts the golden noon murmuring her drowsy tune, rocks the sleepy bees that croon. On the way amid the woods, mandrakes muster multitudes, mid whose blossoms wide as tusk, glides the glimmering forest dusk, 
with her fluttering moths of musk. Here you hear the stealthy stir of shy lives of hoof and fur, harmless things that hide and peer, hearts that sucked the milk of fear, fox and rabbit, squirrel and deer. Here you see the mossy flight of faint forms that love the night, whip poor will and owlet things, whose far call before you brings wonder worlds of happenings. Now in sunlight, now in shade, water like a brandished blade, foaming forward, wild of flight, startles, then arrests the sight, whirling steely loops of light. Through the tree tops down the vale, breezes pass and leave a trail of cool music that the birds, following in happy herds, gather up in twittering words. Blossoms, frail and manifold, strew the way with pearl and gold, blurs that seem the darling print of the springtime's feet or glint of her twinkling gown's torn tint. There the myths of old endure, dreams that are the world's soul's cure, things that have no place or play in the facts of every day, round your presence smile and sway. Suddenly your eyes may see, stepping softly from her tree, slim of form and wet with dew, the brown dryad lips the hue of a berry bit in two. You may mark the naiad rise from her pool's reflected skies, in her gaze the heaven that dreams, starred in twilight haunted streams, mixed with waters grayer gleams. You may see the laurel's girth, big of bloom, give fragrant birth to the oread whose hair, musk and darkness, light and air, fills the hush with wonder there. You may mark the rocks divide, and the fawn before you glide, piping on a magic reed, sowing many a music seed, from which bloom and mushroom bead. Of the rain and sunlight born, young of beard and young of horn, you may see the satyr lie, with a very knowing eye, teaching youngling birds to fly. These shall cheer and follow you, through the veil of dreams come true, wind-like voices, leaf-like feet, forms of mist and hazy heat, in whose pulses sunbeams beat. Lo, you tread enchanted ground, from the hollows all around, Elf and spirit, gnome and fay, guide your feet along the way till the dewy close of day. Then beside you, jet on jet, emerald hued or violet, flickering swings of firefly light, I to guide your steps aright from the valley to the height. Steep the way is when at last. Vale and wood and stream are past. From the heights you shall behold Panther heavens of spotted gold, Tiger tawny deeps unfold. You shall see on stocks and stones Sunset's bell deep color tones, Fallen and the valleys filled With dusk's purple music spilled On the silence rapture thrilled. Then, as answering bell greets bell, nitring in her miracle, of the dome dark overrolled, note on note with starlight cold, twixt the moon's broad peal of gold. On the hilltop, love a dream, shows you then her window gleam, brings you home and folds your soul in the peace of vale and knoll. In the land of hearts made whole. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wind of Winter by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia.
The Wind of Winter The winter wind, the wind of death, who knocked upon my door, now through the keyhole entereth, invisible and hoar. He breathes around his icy breath, and treads the flickering floor. I heard him, wandering in the night, tap at my window pane. With ghostly fingers, snowy white, I heard him tuck in vain, until the shuddering candlelight with fear did cringe and strain. The fire, awakened by his voice, leapt up with frantic arms, like some wild babe that greets with noise its father home who storms with rosy gestures that rejoice and crimson kiss that warms. Now in the hearth he sits and, drowned among the ashes, blows, or through the room goes stealing round, on cautious stepping toes, deep mantled in the drowsy sound of night that sleets and snows. And oft like some thin fairy thing, the stormy hush amid, I hear his captive trebles ring, beneath the kettle's lid, or now a harp of elfland string in some dark cranny hid. Again I hear him, Imp-like wine, cramped in the gusty flue, or knotted in the resinous pine, raise goblin cry and you, while through the smoke his eyeballs shine, a sooty red and blue. At last I hear him, nearing dawn, take up his roaring broom, and sweep wild leaves from wood and lawn, and from the heavens the gloom, to show the gaunt world lying one, and morn's cold rose a bloom. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Wind of Summer by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter From the hills and far away All the long warm summer day Comes the wind and seems to say Come, oh come and let us go Where the meadows bend and blow Waving with the white tops snow Neath the hiss of colored sky Mid the meadows we will lie Watching the white clouds roll by While your hair my hands shall press With a cooling tenderness Till your grief grows less and less Come, oh come, and let us roam Where the rock-cut waters comb Flowing crystal into foam Under trees whose trunks are brown On the banks that violets crown We will watch the fish flash down while your ear my voice shall soothe with a whisper soft and smooth till your care shall wax uncouth come where forests line on line armies of the oak and pine scale the hills and shout and shine we will wander hand in hand ways where tall the toadstools stand milestones white to fairyland while your eyes my lips shall kiss dewy as a wild rose is till they gaze on naught but bliss on the meadows you will hear leaning low your spirit ear cautious footsteps drawing near you will deem it but a bee murmuring soft and sleepily till your inner sight shall see tis a presence passing slow all its shining hair ablow through the white tops tossing snow by the waters if you will and your inmost soul be still melody your ears shall fill you will deem it but the stream rippling onward in a dream till upon your gaze shall gleam arm of spray and throat of foam tis a spirit there a roam where the radiant waters comb in the forest, if you heed, you shall hear a magic reed, so sweet notes like silver seed. You will deem your ears have heard, stir of tree or song of bird, till your startled eyes are blurred by a vision, instant seen, naked gold and barrel green, glimmering bright the boughs between. Follow me! and you shall see wonder worlds of mystery that are only known to me thus outside my city door speaks the wind its wildwood lore speaks and lo i go once more end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. The Spirit of the Forest Spring by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Over the rocks she trails her locks, her mossy locks that drip, drip, drip. Her sparkling eyes smile at the skies, in friendship-wise and fellowship, while the gleam and glance of her countenance lull into trance the woodland places, as over the rocks she trails her locks, her dripping locks that the long fern graces. She pours clear ooze from her heart's cool cruise, its crystal cruise that drips, 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 and all the day its diamond spray is heard to play from her finger-tips, and the slight soft sound makes haunted ground of the woods around that the sunlight laces as she pours clear ooze from her heart's cool cruise, its dripping cruise that no man traces. She swims and swims with glimmering limbs, with lucid limbs that drip, 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 where beechen boughs build a leafy house for her form to drowse or her feet to trip and the liquid beat of her rippling feet makes three times sweet the forest mazes as she swims and swims with glimmering limbs with dripping limbs through the twilight's hazes then wrapped in deeps of the wild she sleeps she whispering sleeps and drips 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 where moon and mist wreath neck and wrist while starry whist through the night she slips and the heavenly dream of her soul makes gleam the falls that stream and the foam that races as wrapped in deeps of the wild she sleeps she dripping sleeps or starward gazes end of poem this recording is in the public domain To the Leaf Cricket by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Three Dead Small twilight singer of dew and mist, Thou ghost-gray gossamer winger of dusk's dim glimmer, How cool thy note sounds, how thy wings of shimmer Vibrate, soft sighing, meseems, for summer That is dead or dying. I stand and listen, and at thy song the garden beds that glisten with rose and lily seem touched with sadness and tuberous chilly breathing around its cold and colorless breath fills the pale evening with wan hints of death i see thee quaintly beneath the leaf thy shell-shaped winglets faintly as thin as spangle of cobwebbed rain held at airy angle I hear thy tinkle, thy fairy notes, the silvery stillness sprinkle, investing wholly the moonlight with divinest melancholy, until, in seeming, I see the spirit of summer dreaming amid her ripened orchards apple-strewn, her great grave eyes fixed on the harvest moon. As dewdrops beady, as mist minute, thy notes ring low and reedy, the vaguest vapor of melody, now near, now like some taper of sound far fading, thou will-o'-wisp of music I evading. Among the bowers, the fog-washed stalks of autumn's weeds and flowers, by hill and hollow I hear thy murmur, and in vain I follow, thou jack-o'-lantern voice, thou elfin cry, thou dirge that tellest beauty she must die. And when the frantic wild winds of autumn with the dead leaves antic, And walnuts scatter the mire of lanes, And dropping acorns patter in grove and forest, Like some frail grief, with the rude blast thou warest, Sending thy slender far cry against the gale That rough, untender, untouched of sorrow, Sweeps thee aside, where haply I, to-morrow, Shall find thee lying, tiny, cold, and crushed, thy weak wings folded, and thy music hushed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Owlet by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Owlet. One. When dusk is drowned in drowsy dreams, and slow the hues of sunset die, when firefly and moth go by, and in still streams the new moon gleams, a sickle in the sky. Then from the hills there comes a cry, the owlet's cry, a shivering voice that sobs and screams, that frightened screams. Who is it? Who is it? Who? Who rides through the dusk and dew, with a pair of horns as thin as thorns, and face a bubble blue? Who? 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 Who is it? Who is it? Who? Two. When night has dulled the lilies white, and opened wide the primrose eyes, when pale mists rise and veil the skies, and round the height in whispering flight the night wind sounds and sighs, then in the woods again it cries, the owlet cries, a shivering voice that calls in fright, in maundering fright. Who is it? Who is it? Who? Who walks with a shuffling shoe? Mid the gusty trees, with a face none sees, and a form as ghostly too. Who, 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 who is it, who is it, who? 3. When midnight leans a listening ear, and tinkles on her insect lutes, when mid the roots the cricket flutes, and marsh and mere, now far, now near, a jack-o'-lantern foots, then over the pool again it hoots, the owlet hoots, a voice that shivers as with fear, that cries in fear. Who is it? Who is it? Who? Who creeps with his glow-worm crew, above the mire, with a corpse-like fire, as only dead men do? Who? 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 Who is it? Who is it? Who? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vine and Sycamore by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Here where a tree and its wild liana Leaning over the streamlet grow Once a nymph, like the mooned Diana Sat in the ages long ago Sat with a mortal with whom she had mated Sat and laughed with a mortal youth Ere he of the forest, the god who hated saw and changed to a form uncouth once in the woods she had heard a shepherd heard a reed in a golden glade followed and clad in the skin of a leopard found him fluting within the shade found him sitting with bare brown shoulder lithe and strong as a sapling oak and leaning over a mossy boulder love in her wildwood heart awoke white she was as a dogwood flower pinkly white as a wild crab bloom sweetly white as a hawtree bower full of dew and the may's perfume he who saw her above him burning beautiful naked in light arrayed deemed her diana and from her turning leapt to his feet and fled afraid far she followed and called and pleaded Ever he fled with never a look, fled till he came to this spot, deep reeded, came to the bank of this forest brook. Here for a moment he stopped and listened, heard in her voice her heart's despair, saw in her eyes the love that glistened, sank on her bosom and rested there. Close to her beauty she strained and pressed him, held and bound him with kiss on kiss, Soft with her arms and her lips caressed him, Sweeter of touch than a blossom is, Spoke to his heart, and with sweet persuasion Mastered his soul till its fear was flown, Spoke to his soul till its mortal evasion Vanished, and body and soul were her own. Many a day had they met and mated, Many a day by this woodland brook, When he of the forest, the god who hated, came on their love and changed with a look. There on the shore, while they joyed and jested, he in the shadow, unseen, espied her, 
like the goddess diana breasted him like endymion by her side lo at a word at a sign their folded limbs and bodies assumed new form hers to the shape of a tree were moulded his to a vine with surrounding arm so they stand with their limbs enlacing nymph and mortal upon the shore he forever a vine embracing her a silvery sycamore end of poem this recording is in the public domain the poet by madison cowain read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter he stands above all worldly schism, and, gazing over life's abysm, beholds within the starry range of heaven laws of death and change, that, through his soul's prophetic prism, are turned to rainbows wild and strange. Through nature is his hope made sure of that ideal, his allure, by whom his life is upward drawn to mount pale pinnacles of dawn, mid which all that is fairer, purer of love and lore it comes upon. An alchemist that makes gold metal of dross, his mind is, where one petal of one wild rose will all outweigh the piled-up facts of every day, where commonplaces, there that settle, are changed to things of heavenly ray. He climbs by steps of stars and flowers, companioned of the dreaming hours, and sets his feet in pastures where no merely mortal feet may fare, and higher than the stars he towers, though lowlier than the flowers there his comrades are his own high fancies and thoughts in which his soul romances and every part of heaven or earth he visits lo assumes new worth and touched with loftier traits and trances reshines as with a lovelier birth he is the play likewise the player the word that said also the sayer and in the books of heart and head there is no thing he has not read of time and tears he is the wayer and mouthpiece twixt the quick and dead he dies but mounting ever higher wings phoenix-like from out his pyre above our mortal day and night clothed on with sempiternal light and raimented in thoughts far fire flames on in everlasting flight unseen yet seen on heights of visions above all praise and world derisions his spirit and his deathless brood of dreams fare on a multitude while on the pillar of great missions his name and place are granite hued end of poem this recording is in the public domain Evening on the Farm by Madison Carwain, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Evening on the Farm From out the hills where twilight stands, above the shadowy pasture lands, with strained and strident cry, beneath pale skies that sunset bands, the bull bats fly. A cloud hangs over, strange of shape, and coloured like the half ripe grape, seems some uneven stain on heaven's azure, thin as crape and blue as rain by ways that sunset sardonyx over flares and gates the farm boy clicks through which the cattle came the mullein stalks seem giant wicks of downy flame from woods no glimmer enters in above the streams that wandering win from out the violet hills those haunters of the dusk begin the whippoorwills adown the dark the firefly marks its flight in golden emerald sparks and loosened from his chain the shaggy watchdog bounds and barks and barks again each breeze brings scents of hill-heaped hay and now an owlet far away cries twice or thrice too -hoo! and cool dim moths of mottled grey flit through the dew the silence sounds its frog bassoon where on the woodland creek's lagoon pale as a ghostly girl lost mid the trees looks down the moon with face of pearl 
Within the shed where locks, late hood, smell forest sweet, and chips of wood make blurs of white and brown, the brood hen cuddles her warm brood of teetering down. The clattering guineas in the tree din for a time, and quietly the hen house near the fence sleeps, save for some brief rivalry of cocks and hens. A cowbell tinkles by the rails, where streaming white in foaming pails, milk makes an uddery sound, while overhead the black bat trails around and round. The night is still, the slow cows chew a drowsy cud, the bird that flew and sang is in its nest. It is the time of falling dew, of dreams and rest. The brown bees sleep, and round the walk, the garden path from stalk to stalk, the bungling beetle booms, where two soft shadows stand and talk among the blooms. The stars are thick, the light is dead that dyed the west, and drowsy head, tuning his cricket pipe, nods, and some apple round and red drops over ripe. Now down the road that shambles by, a window, shining like an eye through climbing rose and gourd, shows where toil sups and these things lie, his heart and hoard. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Brook by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer to it the forest tells the mystery that haunts its heart and folds its form in cogitation deep that holds the shadow of each myth that dwells in nature be it nymph or fay or fawn and whispering of them to the dales and dells it wanders on and on to it the heaven shows the secret of its soul True images of dreams that form its aspect, and with these reflected in its countenance it goes, with pictures of the skies, the dusk and dawn, within its breast, as every blossom knows, for them to gaze upon. Through it the world soul sends, its heart's creating pulse that beats and sings, the music of maternity whence springs all life and shaping earthly ends from the deep sources of the heavens drawn planting its ways with beauty on its winds on and forever on end of poem this recording is in the public domain summer noontide by madison cowain read for LibriVox.org by ADR 6090, July 18th, 2016, California. Summer Noontide The slender snail clings to the leaf, gray on its silvered underside. And slowly, slowlier than the snail, with brief bright steps, whose ripening touch foretells the sheaf, her warm hands berry dyed, comes down the tanned noontide. The pungent fragrance of the mint and pennyroyal drench her gown, that leaves long shreds of trumpet blossom tint, among the thorns and everywhere the glint of gold and white and brown, her flowery steps waft down. The leaves, like hands with emerald veined, along her way try their wild best to reach the jewel, whose hot hue was drained from some rich rose that all the June contained. The butterfly soft pressed upon her sunny breast, her shawl the lace-like elder bloom, she hangs upon the hillside brake, smelling of warmth and her breast perfume. And lying in the citron-colored gloom, beside the lilied lake, she stares the buds awake. Or with a smile through watery deeps, she leads the oaring turtle legs. Or guides the crimson fish that swims and sleeps, from pad to pad from which the young frog leaps. And to its nest's green eggs, the bird that pleads and begs. Then, mid the fields of unmown hay, she shows the bees where sweets are found, and points the butterflies at airy play, and dragonflies along the waterway, where honeyed flowers abound for them to flicker round, or where ripe apples pelt with gold, some barn around which, coned with snow, the wild potato blooms, she mounts its old mossed roof, and through warped sides the knots have hold, lets her long glances glow into the loft below. To show the mud wasp at its cell, 
slenderly busy, swallows too, packing against a beam their nest clay shell, and crouching in the dark the owl as well, with all her downy crew of owlets gray of hue. These are her joys, and until dusk, lounging she walks where reapers reap, from sultry raiment shaking scents of musk, rustling the corn with its silken husk, and driving down heaven's deep, white herds of clouds like sheep. End of poem. This record is in the public domain. Heat by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Omar H. Eldahan 1. Now it is as if spring had never been, and winter but a memory and dream. Here where the summer stands, her lap of green, heaped high with bloom and beam. Among her blackberry lilies, low that lean, to kiss her feet, or freckle brow that stare, upon the dragonfly which, slimly seen, like a blue jewel flickering in her hair, sparkles above them, there. 2. Knee-deep among the tepid pools the cows Chew a slow cud or switch a slower tail, Half sunk in sleep beneath the beechen boughs Where thin the wood gnats ail. From bloom to bloom the languid butterflies drowse, The sleepy bees make hardly any sound. The only things the sun rays can arouse it seems are two black beetles rolling round upon the dusty ground. 3. Within its channel glares the creek and shrinks, beneath whose rocks the furtive crawfish hides, in stagnant places where the green frog blinks and water spider glides. Far hotter seems it for the bird that drinks, the startled kingfisher that screams and flies, hotter and lonelier for the purple pinks of weeds that bloom whose sultry perfumes rise, stifling the swooning skies. 4. From ragweed fallows, rye fields heaped with sheaves, from blistering rocks no moss or lichen crust, and from the road where every hoof stroke heaves, a cloud of burning dust, the hotness quivers, making limp the leaves that loll like tongues of panting hounds. The heat is a wan wimple that the summer weaves, a veil in which she wraps as in a sheet the shriveling corn and wheat. 5. Furious! Incessant in the weeds and briars, the sawing weed bugs sing, and heat begot the grasshoppers so many strident wires. Staccato fiercely hot, a lash of whirling sound that never tires, the locust flails the noon where harnessed thirst, beside the road spring many a shod hoof mires, into the trough thrusts his hot head immersed, round which cool bubbles burst. 6. The sad sweet voice of some wood spirit who laments while watching a loved oak tree die. From the deep forest comes the wood dove's coo, a long lost lonely cry. Oh, for a breeze, a mighty wind to woo, the woods to stormy laughter so like grain. The world with freshness of invisible dew, And pile above far, fevered hill and plain, Vast bastions black with rain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. July by Madison Cowen Read for LibriVox.org by Omar H. Eldahan Now tis the time when, tall, 
the long blue torches of the bellflower gleam among the trees and by the wooded stream in many a fragrant ball blooms of the button bush fall let us go forth and seek woods where the wild plums redden and the beech plumps its packed burrs and swelling just in reach the pawpaw emerald sleek brightens along the creek now tis the time when ways of glimmering green flaunt white the misty plumes of the black cohosh and through the bramble glooms a blur of orange rays the butterfly blossoms blaze let us go forth and hear the spiral music that the locusts beat and that small spray of sound so grassy sweet dear to a country ear the cricket's summer cheer now golden celandine is hairy hung with silvery sacks of seeds and bugled o'er with freckled gold like beads beneath the fox grape vine the jewel weeds blossoms shine let us go forth and see the dragon and the butterfly like gems spangling the sunbeams and the clover stems weighed down by many a bee nodding mellifluously now morns are full of song the catbird and the redbird and the jay upon the hilltops rouse the rosy day who dewy bleeth and strong lures their wild wings along now noons are full of dreams the clouds of heaven and the wandering breeze follow a vision and the flowers and trees the hills and fields and streams are lapped in mystic gleams the nights are full of love and the stars and moon take up the golden tale of the sunk sun and passionate and pale mixing their fires above grow eloquent thereof such days are like a sigh that beauty heaves from a full heart of bliss such nights are the sweetness of a kiss on lips that half deny the warm lips of july end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the locust by madison cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Thou pulse of hotness, who with reed-like breast Makest meridian music, long and loud, Accentuating summer, Dost thy best to make the sunbeams fiercer, And to crowd with lonesomeness the long close afternoon, When labor leans, swart-faced and beady-browed, Upon his sultry scythe, Thou tangible tune of heat, whose waves incessantly arise, quivering and clear beneath the cloudless skies. Thou singest, and upon his haggard hills, drought yawns and rubs his heavy eyes and wakes, brushes the hot hair from his face, and fills the land with death, as sullenly he takes downward his dusty way, midst woods and fields, at every pool his burning thirst he slakes no grove so deep no bank so high it shields a spring from him no creek evades his eye he needs but look and they are withered dry thou singest and thy song is as a spell of somnolence to charm the land with sleep a thorn of sound that pierces dale and dell diffusing slumber over vale and steep sleepy the forest nodding sleepy boughs the pastures sleepy with their sleepy sheep sleepy the creek where sleepily the cows stand knee-deep and the very heaven seems sleepy and lost in undetermined dreams art thou a rattle that monotony summer's dull nurse old sister of slow time shakes for day's peevish pleasure who in glee 
takes its discordant music for sweet rhyme or oboe that the summer noontide plays sitting with ripeness neath the orchard tree trying repeatedly the same shrill phrase until the musky peach with drowsiness drops and the hum of bees grows less and less end of poem this recording is in the public domain Young September by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. With a look and a laugh where the stream was flowing, September led me along the land, where the golden rod and lobelia glowing seemed burning torches within her hand, and faint as the thistle's or milkweed's feather, I glimpsed her form through the sparkling weather now twas her hand and now her hair that tossed me welcome everywhere that lured me onward through the stately rooms of forest hung and carpeted with glooms and windowed wide with azure doored with green through which rich glimmers of her robe were seen now like some deep marshmallow rosy gold now like the great joe pie weed fold on fold of heavy mauve and now like the intense massed ironweed a purple opulence along the bank in a wild procession of golden sapphire the blossoms blew and borne on the breeze came their soft confession in syllables musk of honey and dew in words unheard that their lips kept saying sweet as the lips of children praying and so meseemed i heard them tell how here her loving glance once fell upon this bank and from its azure grew the ageratum mist flower's happy hue how from her kiss as crimson as the dawn the cardinal flower drew its vermilion and from her hair's blond touch the ellie campaign evolved the glory of its golden rain white from her starry footsteps redolent the aster pearled its flowery firmament. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Under the Hunter's Moon by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Under the Hunter's Moon. White from her chrysalis of cloud, the moth like moon swings upward through the night and all the bee-like stars that crowd the hollow hive of heaven wane in her light along the distance folds of mist hang frost pale ridging all the dark with gray tinting the trees with amethyst touching with pearl and purple every spray all night the stealthy frost and fog conspire to slay the rich robed weeds and flowers to strip of wealth the woods and clog with piled up gold of leaves the creek that cowers. I seem to see their spirits stand, moulded of moonlight, faint of form and face, now reaching high a chilly hand to pluck some walnut from its spicy place. Now with fine fingers, phantom cold, splitting the wahoo's pods of rose and thin, the bitter sweet's ball of gold to show the coal red berries packed within. Now on dim threads of gossamer, stringing pale pearls of moisture, necklacing the flowers and spreading cobweb fur, crystalled with stardew over everything. While neath the moon, with moon-white feet, they go and chill a moon-soft music draw from one leaf cricket flutes, the sweet, sad dirge of autumn dying in the shaw. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rain in the Woods by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by Diana Schmidt. When on the leaves the rain persists, and every gust brings showers down, when all the woodland smokes with mists, I take the old road out of town into the hills through which it twists. I find the vale where catnip grows, where bonnet blooms with moisture bowed. The vale through which the red creek flows, 
turbid with hill-washed clay, and loud as some wild horn a hunter blows. Around the root the beetle glides, a lively barrel, and the ant, large, agate red, a garnet, slides beneath the rock, and every plant is roof for some frail thing that hides. Like knots against the trunks of trees, the lichen-colored moths are pressed, and wedged in hollow blooms, the bees seem clots of pollen. In its nest, the wasp has crawled and lies at ease. The locust harsh that sharply saws the silence of the summer noon, the katydid that thinly draws its fine file o'er the bars of moon, and grasshopper that drills each pause. The mantis, long clawed, furtive, lean, fierce feline of the insect hordes, and dragonfly, gauze winged and green, beneath the wild grapes' leaves and gourds, have housed themselves and rest unseen. The butterfly and forest bird are huddled on the same gnarled bough, from which, like some rain voweled word that dampness hoarsely utters now, the tree toad's voice is vaguely heard. I crouch and listen, and again the woods are filled with phantom forms with shapes grotesque in mystic train that rise in reach to me cool arms of mist the wandering wraiths of rain i see them come fantastic fair chill mushroom colored sky and earth grow ghostly with their floating hair and trailing limbs that have their birth in wetness fungi of the air o wraiths of rain o ghosts of mist Still fold me, hold me, and pursue. Still let my lips by yours be kissed. Still draw me with your hands of dew unto the tryst, the dripping tryst. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Lane by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. When the hornet hangs in the hollyhock, and the brown bee drones in the rose, and the west is a red streaked four o'clock, and summer is near its close, it's oh for the gate and the locust lane, and dusk and dew and home again. When the katie did sings and the cricket cries, and ghosts of the mists ascend, and the evening star is a lamp in the skies, and summer is near its end, it's Oh, for the fence and the leafy lane, and the twilight peace and the tryst again. When the owlet hoots in the dogwood tree that leans to the rippling run, and the wind is a wildwood melody, and summer is almost done, it's oh, for the bridge and the bramble lane, and the fragrant hush and her hands again. When fields smell moist with the dewy hay, and woods are cool and wan, and a path for dreams is the milky way, and summer is nearly gone. It's oh for the rock and the woodland lane, and the silence and stars and her lips again. When the weight of the apples breaks down the boughs, and musk melons split with sweet, and the moon is a bloom in the heaven's house, and summer has spent its heat. It's oh for the lane, the trysting lane, and the deep mooned night and her love again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Forest Idol by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Beneath an old beech tree they sat together. Fair as a flower was she of summer weather. They spoke of life and love, while through the boughs above the sunlight, like a dove, dropped many a feather. And there the violet, the bluet near it, made blurs of azure wet, as if some spirit or woodland dream had gone sprinkling the earth with dawn, when only fay and fawn could see or hear it she with her young sweet face 
and eyes grey beaming made of that forest place a spot for dreaming a spot for orids to smooth their nut brown braids for dryads of the glades to dance in gleaming so dim the place so blessed one had not wondered had diane's moonlit breast the deep leaves sundered and there on them a while the goddess deigned to smile while down some forest aisle the far hunt thundered i deem that hour perchance was but a mirror to show them earth's romance and draw them nearer a mirror where meseems all that this earth life dreams all loveliness that gleams their souls saw clearer beneath an old beech tree they dreamed of blisses fair as a flower was she that summer kisses they spoke of dreams and days of love that goes and stays of all for which life prays ah me and misses end of poem this recording is in the public domain Under the Rose by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter He told a story to her, a story old yet new, And was it of the fairy folk that danced along the dew? The night was hung with silence as a room is hung with cloth, And soundless, through the rose-sweet hush, swooned dim the down-white moth. Along the east a shimmer, a tenuous breath of flame, From which, as from a bath of light, nymph-like, the girl-moon came, And pendant in the purple of heaven, like fireflies, Bubbles of gold the great stars blew from windows of the skies. He told a story to her, a story full of dreams, And was it of the elfin things that haunt the thin moonbeams? Upon the hill a thorn-tree, crooked and gnarled and grey, Against the moon seemed some crutched hag dragging a child away, And in the vale a runnel that dripped from shelf to shelf Seemed, in the night, a woodland witch who muttered to herself. Along the land a zephyr, whose breath was wild perfume, That seemed a sorceress who wove sweet spells of beam and bloom. He told a story to her, a story young yet old, And was it of the mystic things men's eyes shall ne'er behold? They heard the dew drip faintly from out the green-cupped leaf, They heard the petals of the rose unfolding from their sheaf, They saw the wind light footing the waters into sheen, They saw the starlight kiss to sleep the blossoms on the green. They heard and saw these wonders, these things they saw and heard, And other things within the heart for which there is no word. He told a story to her, the story men call love, Whose echoes fill the ages past, and the world ne'er tires of. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Autumn by Madison Carwain Read for LibriVox.org by Gabi In Autumn 1. Sunflowers wither and lilies die, Poppies are pots of seeds. The first red leaves on the pathway lie, Like blood of a heart that bleeds. Weary alway will it be today, Weary and worn and wet, Dawn and noon will the clouds hang grey, And the autumn wind will sigh and say, He comes not yet, not yet, Weary alway, alway. 2. Hollyhocks bend all tattered and torn, Marigolds all are gone, the last pale rose lies all forlorn, Like love that is trampled on. 
Weary, ah me, to-night will be, Weary and wild and hoar. Rain and mist will blow from the sea, And the wind will sob in the autumn tree. He comes no more, no more. Weary, ah me, ah me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Epiphany by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. There is nothing that eases my heart so much as the wind that blows from the purple hills. Tis a hand of balsam whose healing touch unburdens my bosom of ills. There is nothing that causes my soul to rejoice like the sunset flaming without a flaw. Tis a burning bush whence God's own voice addresses my spirit with awe. There is nothing that hallows my mind, meseems, like the night with its moon and its stars above. Tis a mystical lily whose golden gleams fulfill my being with love. There is nothing, no, nothing we see and feel, that speaks to our souls some beautiful thought that was not created to help us and heal our lives that are overwrought. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Life by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. 1. Pessimist. There is never a thing we dream or do but was dreamed and done in the ages gone. Everything's old. There is nothing that's new. And so it will be while the world goes on. The thoughts we think have been thought before. The deeds we do have long been done. We pride ourselves on our love and law. And both are as old as the moon and sun. We strive and struggle and swink and sweat, and the end for each is one and the same. Time and the sun and the frost and wet will wear from its pillar the greatest name. No answer comes for our prayer or curse, no word replies, though we shriek in air. Ever the taciturn universe stretches unchanged for our curse or prayer. With our mind's small light in the dark we crawl, glow-worm glimmers that creep about, tilt the power that shaped us over us all, poises his foot and treads us out. Unasked he fashions us out of clay, a little water, a little dust, and then in our holes he thrusts us away, with never a word to rot and rust. Tis a sorry play with a sorry plot, This life of hate and of lust and pain, Where we play our parts and are soon forgot, And all that we do is done in vain. 2. Optimist There is never a dream but it shall come true, And never a deed but was wrought by plan. And life is filled with the strange and new, and ever has been since the world began. As mind develops and soul matures, these two shall parent earth's mightier acts. Love is a fact, and tis love endures, though the world may crack of all other facts. Through thought alone shall our age obtain above all ages gone before. The tribes of sloth of brawn not brain are the tribes that perish are known no more within ourselves is a voice of awe and a hand that points to balanced scales the one is love and the other law and their presence alone it is avails for every shadow about our way there is a glory of moon and sun but the hope within us hath more of ray than the light of the sun and moon in one. Behind all being a purpose lies, undeviating as God hath willed, 
and he alone it is who dies who leaves that purpose unfulfilled life is an epic the master sings whose theme is man and whose music soul where each is a word in the song of things that shall roll on while the ages roll end of poem this recording is in the public domain never song by madison cowen read for librivox.org by omar eldahan love has no place in her though in her bosom be love thoughts and dreams that stir longings that know not me love has no place in her no place for me never within her eyes do i the love light see never her soul replies to the sad soul in me never with soul and eyes speaks she to me she is a star a rose i but a moth a bee high in her heaven she glows blooms far away from me she is a star a rose never for me why will i think of her to my heart's misery dreaming how sweet it were had she a thought of me why will i think of her why why ah me end of poem this recording is in the public domain meeting in the woods by Madison Corwain, read for LibriVox.org by Gabby. Meeting in the woods, through ferns and moss, the path wound to a hollow where the touch me nots swung horns of honey filled with dew, and where, like footprints, violets blue, and bluets made sweet sapphire blots. Twas there that she had passed. He knew. The grass, the very wilderness, on either side breathed rapture of her passage. Twas her hand or dress that touched some tree, a slight caress that made the wood birds sing above, her step that made the flowers uppress. He hurried till across his way, foam footed, bounding through the wood. A brook, like some wild girl at play, went laughing loud its roundelay, and there upon its bank she stood, a sunbeam clad in woodland grey. And when she saw him, all her face grew to a wild rose by the stream, and to his breast a moment's space he gathered her, and all the place seemed conscious of some happy dream come true to add to earth its grace some joy on which heaven was intent for which god made the world the bliss the love that raised her innocent pure face to his that smiling bent and sealed confession with a kiss life needs no other testament end of poem this recording is in the public domain. A Maid Who Died Old by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Frail shrunken face, so pinched and worn That life has carved with care and doubt So weary waiting night and morn for that which never came about pale lamp so utterly forlorn in which god's light at last is out grey hair that lies so thin and prim on either side the sunken brows and soldered eyes so deep and dim no word of man could now arouse and hollow hands so virgin slim forever clasped in silent vows Poor breasts that God designed for love, For baby lips to kiss and press, 
that never felt yet dreamed thereof the human touch the child caress that lie like shriveled blooms above the heart's long perished happiness o withered body nature gave for purposes of death and birth that never knew and could but crave those things perhaps that make life worth rest now alas within the grave sad shell that served no end of earth end of poem this recording is in the public domain Communicants by Madison Carwain, read for LibriVox.org by Gabi. Communicants. Who knows the things they dream, alas, or feel who lie beneath the ground? Perhaps the flowers, the leaves, and grass that close them round. In spring, the violets may spell the moods of them we know not of. Or lilies sweetly syllable their thoughts of love. Haply in summer dew and scent of all they feel may be a part. Each red rose be the testament of some rich heart. The winds of fall be utterance, perhaps, of saddest things they say. Wild leaves may word some dead romance in some dim way in winter all their sleep profound through frost may speak to grass and stream the snow may be the silent sound of all they dream end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dead day by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. The west builds high a sepulchre of cloudy granite and of gold, where twilight's priestly hours inter the day like some great king of old. A censer, rimmed with silver fire, the new moon swings above his tomb, while organ stops of God's own choir star after star throbs in the gloom and night draws near the sadly sweet a nun whose face is calm and fair and kneeling at the dead day's feet her soul goes up in silent prayer in prayer we feel through dewy gleam and flowery fragrance and above all earth the ecstasy and dream that haunt the mystic heart of love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night Errant by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Onward he gallops through enchanted gloom. The spectres of the forest, dark and dim, and shadows of vast death environ him onward he spurs victorious over doom before his eyes that love's far fires illume where courage sits impregnable and grim the form and features of her beauty swim beckoning him on with looks that fears consume the thought of her distress her lips to kiss mails him with triple might and so at last to lust's huge keep he comes, its giant wall, wild towering, frowning from the precipice, and through its gate, borne like a bugle blast, o'er night and hell he thunders to his all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The End of Summer by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Pods are the poppies, and slim spires of pods, the hollyhocks, the balsam's pearly breeds of rose-stained snow are little sacks of seeds, collapsing at a touch, the lote that sods, 
the pond with green has changed its flowers to rods and discs of vesicles and all the weeds around the sleepy water and its reeds are one white smoke of seeded silk that nods summer is dead i me sweet summer's dead the sunset clouds have built her funeral pyre through which e'en now runs subterranean fire while from the east as from a garden bed mist wind the dusk lifts her broad moon like some great golden melon saying fall has come end of poem this recording is in the public domain light and wind by madison cowain read for librivox.org by anusha ayer where through the leaves of myriad forest trees the daylight falls beryl and chrysoprase the glamour and the glimmer of its rays seem visible music tangible melodies light that is music music that one sees wagnerian music where forever sways the spirit of romance and gods and fays take form clad on with dreams and mysteries and now the wind's transmuting necromance touches the light and makes it fall and rise vocal a harp of multitudinous waves that speaks as ocean speaks an utterance of far-off whispers mermaid murmuring sighs pelagian vast deep down in coral caves end of poem this recording is in the public domain Superstition by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Superstition. In the waste places, in the dreadful night, when the wood whispers like a wandering mind, and silence sits and listens to the wind, or mid the rocks to some wild torrent's flight, bat browed thou wadest with thy wisp of light, among black pools the moon can never find or owlet-eyed thou hootest to the blind deep darkness from some cave or haunted height he who beholds but once thy fearsome face never again shall walk alone but one and terrible attendance shall be his unutterable things that have no place in god or beauty that compel him on against all hope where endless horror is End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Uncalled by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. As one who, journeying westward with the sun, beholds at length from the uptowering hills far off. A land unspeakable beauty fills, Circean peaks and vales of Avalon, and sinking weary watches one by one, the big seas beat between, and knows its skills no more to try. That now, as heaven wills, this is the helpless end, that all is done. So tis with him, whom long a vision led in quest of beauty and who finds at last she lies beyond his effort all the waves of all the world between them while the dead the myriad dead who people all the past with failure hail him from forgotten graves end of poem this recording is in the public domain the death of love by Madison Cowen, read for LibriVox.org, by Omar H. Eldahan. So love is dead, the love we knew of old, and in the sorrow of our hearts hushed halls, a lute lies broken, and a flower falls. Love's house is empty, and his hearse is cold, 
lone in dim places where sweet vows were told. In walks grown desolate by ruined walls, beauty decays, and on their pedestals, dreams crumble, and the immortal gods are mold. Music is slain, or sleeps, one voice alone. One voice awakes, and like a wandering ghost, haunts all the echoing chambers of the past. The voice of memory that stills to stone, the soul that hears, the mind that, utterly lost, before its beautiful presence stands aghast. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Despised by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Can one resolve and hunt it from one's heart? This love, this god and fiend That makes a hell of many a life In ways no tongue can tell No mind divine, nor any word impart Would not one think the slights that make hearts smart the ice of love's disdain, the wintry well of love's disfavour, love's own fire would quell, or school its nature, too, to its own art. Why will men cringe and cry forever here, for that which, once obtained, may prove a curse? Why not remember that, however fair, decay is wed to beauty, that each year takes somewhat from the riches of her purse? until at last her house of pride stands bare. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Geraldine, Geraldine by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Geraldine, Geraldine, do you remember where the willows used to screen the water flowing fair? The mill stream's banks of green where first our love begun, when you were seventeen and I was twenty-one? Geraldine, Geraldine, do you remember how from the old bridge we would lean, the bridge that's broken now, to watch the minnows sheen and the ripples of the run when you were seventeen? And I was twenty-one. Geraldine, Geraldine, do you remember, too, The old beech-tree, between whose roots the wild flowers grew, Where oft we met at inn, when stars were few or none, When you were seventeen, and I was twenty-one? Geraldine, Geraldine, the bark has grown around The names I cut therein, and the true love knot that bound, the love knot, clear and clean, I carved when our love begun, when you were seventeen, and I was twenty-one. Geraldine, Geraldine, the roof of the farmhouse grey is fallen and mossy green, its rafters rot away, the old path scarce is seen, where oft our feet would run, when you were seventeen, and I was twenty-one. Geraldine, Geraldine, through each old tree and bough The lone winds cry and keen The place is haunted now With ghosts of what has been With dreams of love long done When you were seventeen And I was twenty-one Geraldine, Geraldine There, in your world of wealth There, where you move a queen Broken in heart and health, Does there ever rise a scene of days Your soul would shun When you were seventeen And I was twenty-one? Geraldine, Geraldine, Here, mid the rose and rue, Would God that your grave were green And I were lying too? Here on the hill, I mean, Where oft we laughed i' the sun When you were seventeen, and I was twenty-one. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Allurement by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer
Across the world she sends me word From gardens fair as falerinas, Now by a blossom, now a bird, To come to her, who long has lured With magic sweeter than Alcina's. I know not what her word may mean, I know not what may mean the voices she sends as messengers serene that through the silvery silence lean to tell me where her heart rejoices. But I must go, I must away, must take the path that is appointed. God grant I find her realm some day, where by her love as by a ray my soul shall be anointed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Black Vespers Pageants by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer The day, all fears with carmine, turns an Indian face towards earth and dies. The west, like some gaunt vase, inurns its ashes under smouldering skies, athwart whose bowl one red cloud streams, strange as a shape some Aztec dreams. Now shadows mass above the world, and night comes on with wind and rain. The mulberry-coloured leaves are hurled like frantic hands against the pane, and through the forests bending low, night stalks like some gigantic woe. In hollows where the thistle shakes a hoar bloom like a witch's light, from weed and flower the rain-wind rakes dead sweetness as a wild man might from out the leaves the woods among dig some dead woman fair and young now let me walk the woodland ways alone except for thoughts that are akin to such wild nights and days a portion of the storm that far fills heaven and earth tumultuously and my own soul with ecstasy end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of a voice on the wind and other poems by Madison Cowain.